Hello, I'm Daisy Cousins. Welcome to This Week in Social Justice. This week's biggest and baddest social justice fails include the baseless Democratic talking point being used to attack President Donald Trump and White House Press Secretary Kayleigh McEnany, the fresh wave of left-wing hypocrisy directed at SCOTUS nominee Judge Amy Coney Barrett, and depending on how long I feel like talking about the first two topics, we may even get time for a bonus topic. So let's get started. But while I have your attention, please, please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I am really quite close to getting to 200,000 subscribers, which is very exciting. It would be very cool if I could get there by the end of the year. And honestly, given the state of this year, it would absolutely make my 2020 if we could get there. So if you like this video and you want to be notified whenever I upload or do a live stream, then please hit that subscribe button right now. I would absolutely love to have you. White House Press Secretary Kayleigh McEnany is known for her fearlessness in the face of the fake news media, which has in turn made her a target for left-wing lobbying. One group that has declared open warfare on Kayleigh is Midas Touch, a Democrat-affiliated super PAC that creates anti-Trump, anti-GOP video clips. Last week, Midas Touch released one directed at Kayleigh, causing hashtag by Kayleigh to trend on Twitter. This president will always put America first. He will always protect American citizens. We will not see disease like the coronavirus come here. The 15 within a couple of days is going to be down to close to zero. This president has this under control. Right now we're proceeding as normal. Joe Biden's looking for an excuse to get off the campaign trail. 50 or 60,000 people. 65,000 people. 75, 80, 80 or 90,000 people. They had minimum numbers of 100,000 and I think we're going to beat that. We have between 100 and 200,000. Uh, we all together have done a very good job. The United States has now registered 200,000. Coronavirus death. The death toll will surpass 410,000 by January. Why haven't you said anything about the U.S. hitting 200,000 deaths? Go ahead, uh, anybody else? The president has always been clear-eyed with the American people. He was always clear-eyed about the lives we could lose. I will never lie to you. You have my word on that. So as you can see, this little clip is attempting to push the flimsy left-wing talking point that because Donald Trump and Kayleigh McEnany are not, you know, psychic, then somehow they have lied about the effects of the coronavirus. It's this idea that because back in February, when there were, say, 15 cases in the whole of the USA, Trump was saying that it was all going to be fine, that he misled the public by downplaying it because apparently he should be able to predict the future. This is about the dumbest talking point the left has come up with, and that is a big statement because they have had some doozies. The reason the Trump lied by downplaying COVID is stupid is because what Trump was doing, which he has happily admitted, was trying not to cause a panic and to give the American people some hope. That's called good leadership, not telling lies. Also, remember, in February and March, we had very little information about the coronavirus compared to what we have now, and all world leaders were flying blind with the good ones trying desperately not to alarm the public while they gathered more information and formulated a plan. And Donald Trump was one of those leaders. Anyone with a grain of sense who is not blinded by hatred of Donald Trump can tell the difference between willfully misleading the public and trying not to frighten constituents out of their minds. However, we must remember here that we're dealing with a group of people in the media and on the regressive left generally who just love getting hysterical. They love a panic and they love a crisis because it gives them an excuse to moralize and be emotional and feel important. We see it on the left all the time. Everything from climate change to toxic masculinity, they are always flapping their hands about something. The sky is falling! The sky is falling! I'm honestly, I have never known of a group of people who so enjoy being miserable. As such, if politicians aren't fear-mongering, the media and the regressive left are inclined to think that they are doing something wrong. They just want to always be freaking out over something in order to gain political capital and, of course, write clickbaity articles. Bunch of drama queens, I swear. 
In any case, Trump was very realistic actually about the dangers of the virus in the beginning. He just didn't play it up because he didn't want to cause mass panic. We saw how serious he was about COVID in the fact that he was one of the first world leaders to institute travel restrictions from China, with of course the exception of American residents which he implemented on January 31st, regardless of the accusations of racism and xenophobia from the very same leftists who are now accusing him of downplaying the severity of the virus and thus misleading the American people. And if you really want to talk about downplaying coronavirus, consider the fact that in January and February, when information about the coronavirus was first coming to light, the Democrats, instead of paying attention to it and trying to work with Republicans to best deal with the threat, were pushing their silly impeachment trial and screaming at Trump for being racist against Chinese people. And in the case of Nancy Pelosi, she was encouraging people to gather in large large groups in restaurants and other public spaces, which if she'd been paying attention to what was happening in Wuhan, she would have realized was not a good idea. It's exciting to be here, especially at this time, uh, to be able to be unified with our community. Uh, we want to be vigilant about what it might be on the, uh, what is out there in other places. We want to be careful about how we deal with it, but we do want to say to people, come to Chinatown, here we are. We're, again, careful, safe, and come join us. As such, I can only conclude that Midas Touch and everyone else who is pushing this line of attack is either acting in notoriously bad faith, which is the most likely explanation, or perhaps they genuinely think Trump has superpowers and thus expected him to be clairvoyant. But, of course, Nobody could have predicted what would happen with COVID-19, and indeed nobody did. No world leader was spot on initially. I don't know why they seem to think Trump should be psychic and then call him a liar because he wasn't. For instance, when there were only 15 cases in the US and we knew very little about the virus, the logical thing was to say that we'll have it down to zero ASAP, as the Midas Touch clip showed. If Trump had battened down the hatches back then for 15 cases, he would have been ripped to shreds for it. It's always the same with Trump. I mean, as we know, he's damned if he does and damned if he doesn't. All in all, Midas Touch has simply put out another stupid, baseless propaganda piece misrepresenting the facts, as usual, and coming from people who are willing to go as low and as dirty as they can in order to win the upcoming election. Massive social justice fail to Midas Touch on this one. As expected, Judge Amy Coney Barrett has been announced as Donald Trump's nominee to replace Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg on the Supreme Court, and boy does that have the lefties in a tiz. Not that this is anything new. They've been freaking out about Amy Coney Barrett from mere hours after Justice Ginsburg had passed away, when it became evident that she was the favorite for the nomination. Now this is not only because Amy is a conservative, but because she is a devout Catholic and very pro-life. So of course all the little lefties are fixating on Roe v. Wade as if as soon as Amy steps through the doors of the Supreme Court, she's going to whip out her pen and abolish Roe then and there. Now, not only does that show a huge ignorance of how the law works in the USA, but Amy Coney Barrett has said multiple times that she sees Roe v. Wade as a valid precedent and that she will not allow her personal or religious beliefs to, in to influence her judicial decisions. But of course, this was not enough for the Roe-obsessed regressive left, and what an unhealthy, morbid obsession that is, by the way, who continued to insist that she was a cult member and a religious kook because of her involvement with a charismatic Catholic group called People of Praise, and therefore, of course, she must believe that contraception should be banned and that wives should be subservient to their husbands which would seem a little bit of an odd accusation, considering the fact that Amy has had a long and prestigious career as a law professor and as a judge, and is a Senate hearing away from being a Justice of the Supreme Court of the United States of America. Surely, if she actually believed wives should be subservient to their husbands, she would be at home chained to the sink. Anyway, after a week and a half of howling attacks on her religious beliefs and family choices, the issue of race and racism has been brought to the fray. See, Amy Coney Barrett has seven children, two of which are adopted and from Haiti. 
Ordinarily, a woman like Amy would be commended for not only raising seven children, but forging a killer career for herself and maintaining a functional marriage. I mean, that's one heck of a juggling act right there. However, rather than be recognized for this, the critical race theory activists have jumped in and are accusing her of racism for, you guessed it, adopting black children. <laughs> that is so lame. <laughs> so how did this start? Well, Boston University professor Ibram X. Kendi for some reason thought it was a good idea to tweet this about Amy Coney Barrett and her adopted children. Some white colonizers adopted black children. They civilized these savage children in the superior ways of white people while using them as props in their lifelong pictures of denial while cutting the biological parents of these children out of the picture of humanity. He continued, and whether this is Barrett or not is not the point. It is a belief too many white people have. If they have or adopt a child of color, then they can't be racist. I'm challenging the idea that white parents of kids of color are inherently not racist. And the bots completely change what I'm saying to white parents of kids of color are inherently racist. These live and fake bots are good at their propaganda. Let's not argue with them. Isn't it ironic that Ibram B. Kendi wrote a book entitled How to Be an Anti-Racist and yet he says some of the most virulently racist things I've ever heard. It's actually an interesting example of the horseshoe theory of politics. That is, the notion that the extremes of both sides tend to meet in the middle, like a horseshoe. In this situation, the idea that white people shouldn't adopt black children coming from someone who is supposedly an anti-racist is right in line with white supremacist thinking, that is, people who are unashamedly and openly racist as a philosophy. It's pure segregation. Honestly, it's parodical how much woke people and racist people have in common. When me and Brad first met, I didn't think we'd get along, but turns out we kind of agree on everything. Your, Your racial, racial identity is the most important thing. thing. Everything, everything should be looked at through the lens of race. race. Jinx, you owe me a Coke. Damn. We both have a lot of opinions about people of color, even though we barely know any. I say colored people, but as long as we're classifying them. Now, you would have to be among the saltiest people in the world to use someone's adopted kids as a weapon to imply they're racist. And certainly, Candy copped a huge amount of criticism for this incredibly hot take. However, not only were there people in the replies agreeing with him, and I have linked that thread in the video description so you can go in and behold it for yourselves, if you like. Other people made this argument all on their own, like journalist Christine Grimaldi, who said in a since-deleted tweet, Trump and Barrett using her black children and child with Down syndrome to score political points isn't surprising, but it's no less appalling. Pot calling the kettle black, I would have thought. However, possibly the worst take came from Democratic staffer and campaigner Dana Hall, who had this to say. I would love to know which adoption agency Amy Coney Barrett and her husband used to adopt the two children they brought here from Haiti. So here's a cue. Does the press even investigate details of Barrett's adoptions from Haiti? Some adoptions from Haiti were legit. Many were sketchy as hell. And if press learned they were unethical and maybe illegal adoptions, would they report it? Or not, because it involves her children. Would it matter if her kids were scooped up by ultra-religious Americans or Americans weren't scrupulous intermediaries and the kids were taken when there was a family in Haiti? I don't know. I think it does but maybe it doesn't or shouldn't. Now, while she set her Twitter account to protect it and did apologize for the tweets, the cat was already out of the bag thanks to the beauty and terror of the screenshot function. So much for the tolerant, compassionate, empathetic left, am I right? All in all, this rather disgraceful commentary from leftists shows just how paranoid they are about the current political situation. They were so spoiled for a full eight years while Obama was in power. They thought everyone agreed with them and that they were so correct about everything and that they could bully and belittle anyone who disagreed with them with zero accountability. However, as 2016 proved, they can't always have everything they want and they still just haven't got over it giant social justice fail to the critical race theorist activists on this one. Unfortunately, I've talked so long about the first two topics we've run out of time for a bonus topic, but tune in next time, you might get lucky. If you liked that video, please remember to like, subscribe, share, leave me a comment, and if you really, really liked it, then check out the video description for my subscribe star link and other ways you can support me. Mm -hmm.